Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Happy almost June. Happy monthly reset week. I call it reset week in this house because I do like my reset and then my budget with me. I'm on my lunch break right now from work. It's Tuesday. You guys are seeing this tomorrow and I've spent the last few days and this morning just kind of brainstorming some goals, wrapping up some book reviews and I'm just so excited to hang out for the next little bit. If you guys are new here, I started filming these monthly resets like over two years ago now. They've kind of just evolved into this really low-key, chatty, chill, Let's talk about the month and then the month ahead, kind of like we're two friends in a coffee shop, just kind of planning our life out together. And yeah, they're just kind of laid back and fun. We talk about the books we've read, the books we want to read, things we're looking forward to in the month ahead, current favorites, goals, all that stuff. It's a really fun time. I'm a little biased, but I think it's a really fun time around here. And I film a lot of like homebody, budget friendly, introvert, life at home, fixer upper kind of vlogs. I would love it if you hit subscribe and joined our little corner of the internet because I can't believe I'm saying this, but I am 300 subscribers away from 100K, which does not, does not feel real in the slightest. So anyways, I would love it if you joined our little corner of the internet. I took a break from the goal setting last month. I kind of like to do this midway through the year just to give myself a little bit of a reset and a recharge. And honestly, it felt great. I took, like I said, nine days off from posting, which I've never done. It felt really long. I missed you guys so much, but I think it was really good for me. And honestly, I just feel really recharged and rejuvenated going into June. I think the good weather also helps too. I'm just so excited. I feel like June is gonna be a really fun month. I have a lot of fun videos to share. I have like the whole month already planned out and there's just so much going on that I'm so excited to share with you guys. Anyways, I literally cannot wipe the smile off my face. I'm just in such a good mood today. The sun is coming out. It just rained all morning. Let's just, let's just jump into it, shall we? So I've filmed a few vlogs since we've been back from vacation, but I feel like I've just missed you guys so much. I've missed the camera. I've missed vlogging. Enough. Okay, Carter, let's jump into it. So pretty much two goals in each category, maybe a little less. I'm, I'm remembering that less is more when it comes to goal setting. So for personal, this goal has been on my list for two months now, um, but I just had it before as like explore a small town. This month I got really specific and I'm hoping that helps me actually achieve it. So my first goal is to explore Brockville on a solo day. I really wanted to do a whole like thrift with me day and I know they have a lot of good antique and thrift stores there. They have a bookstore I wanna check out. And so I kinda wanna just like explore the new small town. And so that's one of my goals for June, especially now that the weather is nice, but it's not too warm yet. And then the next is to focus on finishing the book I'm reading and not starting another. This was one of my goals for 2024 was to be better about finishing books. I just want to preface, if I'm not enjoying a book, I will DNF it. I have no issues DNFing books. It's more that I am a mood reader and I will start a book. I'll get 10, 20% in. And it's not that I'm not enjoying it, but I'm like distracted. I'm like, let's start another book. And then I have so many books on the go and then I never get through my library holds. And I really want to work on this month. Like if I've started a book, you know, I'm 59 pages into this one, uh, finish the dang book and then start another one. Cause guess what? The book is still going to be there even if you finish this one first. So those are my two personal goals for the month that I really wanna try and work on. Next in health and wellness is I just wanna average 12 to 15,000 steps a day. I feel like I was in a really good routine right before we left for Florida with like my little health challenge, like lifting three days a week. I feel like I had a really good split. I was averaging probably around 12 to 13,000 steps a day. That's what feels really good for me. That's like a good number for me and a pretty, I wouldn't say easy to hit. It involves a little bit of effort, but as you guys know, we have two dogs, very high energy one-year-old dog not human we probably just on walks with the dogs alone average eight to ten thousand steps a day and so i just want to kind of make sure i'm getting out for a walk by myself too midday maybe when it's warmer out and the dogs can't come so that's my only health and wellness goal i feel like i'm at a really good point with like my protein intake that's the only really like nutritional thing i am focusing on i eat a lot of fruits and veggies happy with my gym split and just really want to focus on those steps and kind of getting back into a good routine I do have some business goals, but I'm gonna keep those private this month. Uh, for finance, I have three. So the first is to reevaluate my business budget. Now, I feel like a lot of people don't talk about like businesses or being a creator and the business finance side of it. There's obviously just stuff I can't share from a legal perspective. However, uh, at the beginning of the year, I kind of set myself a new payout model. As you guys know, I do still work a corporate nine to five and I try my best to like live off of that as much as possible. So I'm not on a salary. Uh, system with my 
like with social media and last year I was paying myself consistent dividends every month however months I just feel like I make enough for my nine to five to cover that and so now I just kind of pay myself dividends or distributions as needed and so with that I'm just trying to find a new good business model I've opened up some savings accounts on the business side and I kind of want to start a travel sinking fund for the business because I do travel to Toronto about once a quarter for like meetings and stuff and we obviously do some business travel whether it be like we work with disney we go to disney or we work with um the new york city tourism board we go to new york city right like those are kind of like work trips but we still have to pay for them and budget for them so i just want to be better about maybe putting money aside monthly into like a travel sinking fund for the business and i really just like now that we filed our taxes for the year i really just kind of got to get ahead on like my bookkeeping going through my subscriptions, making sure, you know, if there's anything I don't need, I cancel it. So I kind of want to almost have like a business budget day, like go to a coffee shop, spend a few hours just kind of tweaking and updating that because I don't feel like I update it nearly as much as I do on the personal side. Next is save what I realistically can. We have a pretty high spend month with the house. We don't have any gutters right now. I think that's what you guys call them in the States. We call them eavesdrops in Canada but basically the previous owners took them off because they thought they were ugly, um, which, you know, having gutters on your home is kind of necessary, uh, you know, for drainage purposes. We obviously get a lot of snow being in Canada, so you have to deal with the consequences of people just taking things off because they were ugly. And, you know, it is what it is. I will talk about this a bit more in my like budgeting for a new month video that will come out later this week, but I actually got my retro pay from work this month and, you know, I'm I'm just going to be honest, all of it is going towards the house. I spent like maybe a couple hundred dollars on myself, but all of it went into paying for our East drops this month. And then we also have property taxes. So instead of stressing myself out financially and being like, I have to save X, Y, Z, I have to be able to recognize that like it's a higher spend month. We have to put more money into the house. I'm just going to save what I realistically can at the end of the month. I'm not going to set a certain number. I'll be happy with whatever. If I don't save anything, like that's also okay. Like it happens. You have high spend months, right? I'm going to get into this probably once again, a bit deeper in my monthly budget video, but I'm not doing this because I feel like I have an unhealthy relationship with my finances. Like I am able to save and invest, but I just thought it would be a fun challenge. I personally don't think that no spend challenges are good for me. I think they're just a bit too restrictive and I think I would just like binge spend after the month is over. I just wanna be really conscious and I always say, oh, I'm gonna do a little spend month and then I never like hold myself to it or set myself up for success. And so this month I want to honestly just to, like see. I had a really good spending month this month. It was probably the lowest my credit card had been in a few months and I was like wow this is like a really comfortable number for me I really like where I am at the end of the month with my money with spending xyz so I really just want to hold myself to it and I think low spend months can be kind of a fun challenge everyone is going to have different areas that they need to improve on right so we only eat out once a week I only get coffee out once a week so that's not something I feel like I need to cut from my budget completely but maybe for you, you like to order DoorDash or Uber Eats or go out to eat a lot. So maybe you're gonna challenge yourself to not do that this month. And I think it can be a bit more successful if you pick a few categories that you wanna work on rather than saying like, I'm not spending at all. And obviously, if a no spend challenge works for you, like by all means go for it. I'm just saying it's not for me. I wanna just do a low spend in terms of like the personal shopping side. I don't feel like I've overspent by any means, but I just want to kind of challenge myself to it. And you know, it's nice out. There's a lot of free things that we can do outside and we just have a lot uh, to do around the house that will keep us busy this month. So anyways, like I said, I'll get further into that and like what I'm allowed to spend on and what I'm not in my budget with me, but I'm doing a serious low spend month. Relationship, I have one beach day at least. We are maybe 10 minutes from the beach now and we just got beach chairs actually this past weekend so I'm ready I'm a beach girl I don't know why I keep doing this but I'm gonna have at least one beach day and then the next is to try a new restaurant this has been on my monthly goals for a few months now but now that it's nice out and the weather is just like nice we can sit on a patio I feel like we're more likely to do it and once again with like the low spend we only really go out to eat like maybe once a month the other three weeks that we eat out once a week it's usually takeout so I think it could be fun to do 
just a little like on a restaurant date night for house and home uh if you guys are new here we have a hundred year old fixer upper when we bought it we didn't think it was a fixer upper we were quite deceived but anyways i digress it's all good matt and i were actually going over the listing for the house the other day and we were laughing because it was like beautifully maintained newly renovated that's why it was so cheap so we're kind of just always doing projects. I love sharing projects with you guys on a budget. So this month's kind of like budget friendly project. I want to do a board and batten uh, wall in the hallway and then do a gallery wall with all our Disney pins. I think that would look really cool. And I love finding subtle ways to integrate Disney into our home style, which is very like cozy, vintage, modern, I guess. So that's our project for the month. And then I kind of want to start the kitchen. The kitchen has to be done by the mid-july for a sponsored post so i want to tackle that in june and if i can at least just tackle getting the cabinets painted i think that's a big chunk of the project done so that's my goal those are the goals for june and i'm really excited about it i think there's gonna be some really fun vlogs this month and just looking forward to see what june has to offer i feel like this is a good amount of goals that I'm not going to be obsessed with them and not live my everyday life, right? Like I'll be able to kind of like enjoy life too. And some of these goals are just fun goals, right? Like exploring a new small town and date nights and stuff like that. And honestly, I view home projects as fun. I love doing them. I love seeing like the progress we make in this house. So I consider them fun. I'm not going to lie. There's definitely ones that aren't fun. Like staining that back deck was not fun in the 30 degree heat, but it is what it is. So if you guys are interested in the finance content, I do film like a separate monthly budget video as well. And that will kind of have more details of like the low spend and then just kind of like my budget and how all that went for the month. Okay, I thought while we were here, we were talking about goals. We could go over my 2024 goals. I know that technically halfway through the year is like the end of June, but I'm just kind of in the mood for it. So let's go over the goals, see how we're feeling. Maybe we're going to take some goals out. Maybe we're going to add some goals in. It's never too late. It's never too early to start on a new goal finance i have average 10 to 12 no spend days a month i feel like i'm very on track to do that i probably honestly only spend on the weekends like maybe one weekday so feel really good about that save less to save more this one is going really really well i'm really proud of myself if you guys missed it this was because i was over saving to the point where i would have to constantly take the money out of my savings because i needed it for like day-to-day -day life now i'm saving less but i'm pulling from my savings less and it's going really really well invest a total of ten thousand dollars this one's going pretty well i'm pretty sure i'm around the halfway mark for this just because i was throwing a ton of money into my rrsp before tax season so this one's going really really well my current main priority however is to increase our emergency fund which i just added some money to for the first time this year you know it is what it is it's never too late with my retro pay and my goal is to get my emergency fund i think to about ten thousand. that feels like a good number for me start utilizing sinking funds we're doing great with this and then buying less but buying better this one is going good as well but i feel like i can take this goal off i feel like this is kind of like ingrained in me now that i don't really need that as a goal on the personal side trade one of our cars in for an suv this is one of those goals like if it happens great if it doesn't happen it's fine learn how to make bread we did that learn how to delegate my personal and professional life i'm still working on this i'm not gonna lie okay so the sign language goal it hasn't been going good so far i know it's like never too late honestly so i feel like i'm going to really work on this one now i just wanted to make sure i was finding a good source uh to learn but this is a reminder i need to start on that goal next is to prioritize friendships and reach out more i feel like i've been killing it i'm not gonna lie i'm not even gonna be humble here i feel like i've been really really good about this i just realized i'm a voice memo girly and that is like how i stay in touch with my friends like morgan and i probably voice memo 10 times a day and it just like helps us feel really connected brianna and i obviously talk all the time we facetime and i'm trying to be better about initiating facetimes just because i feel like i'm just such a like i love being by myself but i'm trying to remember if i'm like bored on the couch matt's playing games i don't want to watch youtube instead of scrolling on my phone like let me just call a friend and catch up watch one new release movie a month i think i'm gonna change this to just watching like a certain amount of movies in a year just because i feel like there's not always a movie every month we want to watch so i'm gonna say i want to watch 12 new release movies this year i feel like that's a better goal just because monthly like there isn't always something to watch some months we watch three just kind of depends travel visit disneyland in california potentially go on another media trip with disney potentially visit one new state and visit two new provinces so we'll definitely check those off because we'll be going to boston 
this will be in massachusetts my trip to Yellowknife got canceled due to like weather purposes in june so right now i only have one new province which is st john's so i might tweak this to one new province i just don't think we're gonna have time to go anywhere else honestly we just have so much going on so much travel this year business hit 150k subscribers on youtube we're almost at 100k hit 25k followers on tiktok and then hit 50k on instagram i feel like slowly but surely we're getting there get invited to an f1 race we're, we're still working on this we're, we're still manifesting it my manager is working so dang hard to make this happen travel to toronto for business at least three times i'm i'll be there a second time in july so we're making headway on that film at least one bookish video every month i was doing good and then i fell off in may because of travel but once again i think i might just put like film six maybe i'll just put film 10 reading bookish videos this year there we go brand deal and adsense like private number goals so that's a little checking on the 2024 goals i feel like they are honestly going pretty well so far and like i said there was some that i wanted to take off some that i wanted to add on we're always tweaking around here it's, it's okay to do that we're always changing as people so our goals should always be changing and our priorities are always changing so next maybe we could talk about the books that i read this month or should we do my favorites what should we do let's do let's do the book stuff let's let's do the book stuff so this month wasn't a great read well i actually had a good time reading the books i read but i didn't read a ton this month i read five books uh which was 1664 pages i obviously read 100 percent fiction my most read genres were thriller and romance this month and then my average rating was a 3.7 so let's jump into it i have the four out of the five books here track all of it in notion let me know if you guys want like an updated notion tour but i just have a spreadsheet which i can put like an overlay on the screen of what it looks like that i just track all of my books with okay first book i read this month was expiration dates by rebecca searle this was so cute i gave this 4.25 stars this book follows our main character daphne and basically every time she meets a new man there's like a slip of paper that shows up after her date or her like fate encounter with them and it says how long she's going to date them for so say like matt three months or like george three years and basically she goes on this blind date with a guy named jake and her blank paper with jake says nothing on it so she's like have i met the love of my life i don't know and on the little synopsis blurb it says Daphne knows things Jake doesn't. Information that if he found out would break his heart. So I was super curious what the twist was going to be in this book. And I had such a fun time reading this. I don't remember loving in five years. I remember being like, oh, this is like cute. It's okay. But I really, really enjoyed this. The premise was really unique. And I just really loved the mix of like romance, magical realism, and then also women's fiction in this. It had some good twists and surprises that I really didn't see coming. And... I really just enjoy Searle's writing. I didn't, once again, love In Five Years, but I just really liked how this was elegant and prosy without being too prosy, but it was really easy and quick to read. This also doesn't have any spice in it, so if this could be the book for you if you don't like spicy romance. And I just felt like the characters were really engaging and it had some good emotional depth. So honestly, highly recommend. Powerful by Lauren Roberts, which is book 1.5 in the Powerful trilogy. And this is obviously just like a little baby novella. As read Powerless, you would kind of know how this is going to end because it's basically um, Adina's story. So in the first book, we learned that Adina and Peyton are best friends and they live together kind of like in the slums of this universe and this takes place when Peyton is selected for the trial so it's kind of all about what Adina is going through she is kind of fending for herself this mysterious man from the market comes to her rescue after she like attempts to steal something and they come after her and it's all about Mac and her love story but like we know parts of Adina's story from the first book already it's funny because I already knew how this was going to end but I like refused to believe it like I just thought maybe there would be a different ending I love the force proximity i love the way that they communicated it was very intense it was very beautiful and i really just enjoyed adina as like a side character like she deserved her own moment here and i think this was the perfect way to do it so yeah highly recommend i didn't love powerless i'm not gonna lie but that's like no i just should rephrase that i enjoyed the world building aspect of powerless i didn't like the trial part of it so i really enjoyed reading this because it wasn't directly about the trials so if you're the same as me, I do highly recommend giving this a go because I really had a great time reading it. Okay, then I finally read my year of rest and relaxation. Guys, I gave this a two star. 
and a lot of you guys on Instagram agreed with me. I will preface this by saying I understand how people would like this story. It was just really boring to me. Um, but this is about our narrator who like taking a year of rest and relaxation, an inheritance. She lives in New York City, I believe in the Upper East Side. I really don't know how to, I really don't know how to explain this book, honestly. She basically is taking a year of rest and relaxation. Like she doesn't have a job and she's like taking a year to sleep while she's going through some shit mentally. Talking in strangely tender story of a young woman's efforts to duck the ills of the world with the help of one of the worst psychiatrists. Um, and let me know if I should read any of Otessa's other books, but I really, liked the author's writing but i just really despised the execution and the story of this book i feel like it was boring on purpose but i just like i couldn't connect with the artistic style of that and like i said i could totally see how other people love it it just it wasn't for me i kept thinking it was gonna get better which is why i didn't dnf it but i just didn't really enjoy it it was really boring to me so yeah, the only one I don't have is Home is Where the Bodies Are by Geneva Rose. This was pretty good. I gave it 3.75 stars. It is a suburban thriller about three siblings who are brought back to their small town after the death of their mother. And they all kind of have their issues. Beth was caring for her mother until the end. Nicole has unfortunately like an addiction problem. And then Michael is this rich boy who's living in Silicon Valley. And it's all about them kind of coming together and Basically, they're going through their mother's things after she passes and they stumble upon a VHS of their father kind of like covered in blood and they're trying to uncover this family secret. Great premise, uh, but honestly, just a really slow execution in my opinion. It was a really character driven book if you like that in thriller books. I just, it was really, really slow. I feel like the beginning was good and then it was slow from like the 30 to 70% mark and then it just like really picked up and something about me is I just really prefer an evenly paced thriller book. So I enjoyed it. It just wasn't as twisty and fast paced as I thought it would be, but if you can get it from the library, it was like a fun read. Then lastly, I read The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson, which I went into this with really high expectations as did everyone on Goodreads apparently. And I ended up giving this a 3.75 star, which once again, it's not like a bad rating. It just, it just kind of didn't hit as much as Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I talked about this in a recent vlog, but this is about Belle and she kind of lives her life in the shadow of her mom's disappearance. Um, her name's Rachel Price. Basically when Belle was two, she just kind of like disappeared without a trace. And now Belle is 18 and this true crime documentary is happening. They're trying to like solve what happened to her mother. And then all of a sudden her mother just like appears at the door, like comes back to life. Figure out the meaning behind her mom disappearing, if someone wanted her to disappear, who she should trust. I think the theme of this month with thriller books is like great execution, but slow in the middle. I feel like this could have easily been 80 to 100 pages shorter. And I'm not gonna lie, the twist to me felt so predictable. And at first I was like, maybe it's because it's a YA book, but I don't remember, like I remember being surprised at the twist in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So I don't think that's like really an excuse for not a good twist, but it was like truly the most predictable twist it could have been. Like, you know what I mean? When you're, when you're like, okay, well it can't be this because that's so obvious. Yeah, it was a mostly fast paced thriller. Once again, like if you can get it from the library, I would highly recommend reading it. It was really fun. I was really hooked from the get go. Um, just the execution fell flat for me again, but that's okay. And those are the books that I read in May. I'm not gonna set a TBR for June because when you guys see the amount of new releases that are coming out, you're gonna understand why because my TBR for June is these new releases. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm gonna be busy in June reading. Uh, no one, no one contact me. I'm putting my phone on do not disturb and I'm just gonna spend the entire month working and reading, I think. There is so many good books coming out that I just... I don't even know where to start. So, okay, on June 4th, we have Crossroads by Daphne Perry, which is the start of a new series called The Haven River Ranch. This is a small town romance about love, loss, and a Montana legacy. Then I'm so excited. We have Leather and Lark, which you guys know, Butcher and Blackbird was one of my favorite books from last year. This is the second book in the Ruinous Love Trilogy. And this is a hate to love, dark romantic comedy packed with danger, chaos, and heat. I am just, I'm so excited. This one says tropes are hate to love, married to convenience, grumpy sunshine, he falls first, groveling but make it psycho and touch her and him and die, which we love. Then we also have All My Kisses For You by Monica Murphy, which is the first book in the Lancaster Prep Next Generation series, which I'm so excited. The first book is Crew and Ren's Daughter from like the original series. Can't wait, it's gonna be 
so good. It doesn't say anything about tropes in this, but I love Monica Murphy books. So I'm really excited to get to that. June 11th is quite stacked. Honestly, we have The Paris Widow by Kimberly Bell, which is a dream vacation turns deadly when secrets from the past catch up to a married couple in Paris in a new edgier seat thriller. I love Kimberly Bell. She wrote The Marriage Lie, which is like a really popular thriller book. The new installment in the Freedom McFadden housemaid like world book series, the housemaid is watching, which I don't know too much about. I don't want to spoil it for myself. I'm really hoping this is Frida's comeback because her last few books have not been great. And then we also have The Rom-Commers by Catherine Center. I love Catherine Center. I'm so excited about this. Harley is a Hollywood screenwriter superstar who decides to change genres, leaving action movies behind for rom-coms. Enter Emma, longtime friend of Charlie's agent Logan, an aspiring writer for years. Emma had to put her career on hold to tend to her family. Can't she teach Charlie to write a rom com? What a happily ever after looks like and feels like. Oh, this sounds really wholesome and sweet. So excited about that. Then on June 13th, which is kind of off from the normal like Tuesday publishing dates, we have the third book in the Full Throttle series, which is a new F1 romance series. I'm still in the first book, but you can bet your ass I'm excited about the third one, even though I haven't even read the second one. The book series is called Over the Limit by Kate Bromberg. This just says you don't mess around with a teammate's ex ever. Easier said than done when it comes to Blair. Forbidden F1 romance really pumped about that one. So have the second book in the Lakefront Billionaire series by Lauren Asher, Love Unwritten. I'm not gonna lie, I still have not read Love Redesigned, so I could not tell you what this is about. But if you've been waiting for that to come out, it's coming out this month. We also have a follow-up to The Last Mrs. Parish, which I had no idea this was even coming out. I believe it's called the next Mrs. Parish. I feel like I need to almost do a reread of the last Mrs. Parish though, because I feel like I don't remember what happened. But this just says Daphne and Amber are thrust back into each other's lives upon the resurgence of a long forgotten threat, forcing a vicious game of cat and mouse where everything is on the line. So I, I remember what happened, but I don't exactly remember what happened. So I'm gonna have to go back and refresh on that book. But I'm really excited about that. I love Liv Constantine's writing. I believe it's two authors. And then the one that I'm the most excited about, we have the new Riley Sager release called Middle of the Night, which I am stoked for. This just says a man must contend with the long ago disappearance of his childhood best friends and the dark secrets lurking just beyond the safe confines of his picture perfect neighborhood. And the cover for this is really cool. Then on June 25th, we have two new books. We have a new book from Ashley Poston, which is so exciting. Have you read The Seven Year Slip yet? No but it's fine. It's called A Novel Love Story and it says a professor of lit finds herself caught up in a work of fiction, literally. The cover, really fun and bright and very summer vibes. So excited for that. And then lastly, on my list, we have the new Christina Lauren book, which is called Tangled Up in You, meant to be a witty and deeply romantic modern retelling of Disney's Tangled. <gasps> Oh wait, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know the premise of that was or that it was included in that meant to be series. So really looking forward to that. So those are all the new releases coming out in June. There's also a bunch of good TV shows coming out in June. I'm just like really looking forward to it. It's gonna be really fun. Let's finish this off with favorites. I have 11 minutes before my memory card runs out of footage. Can we do it? I'm gonna put myself to the test. Favorite movie we watched this month. That is hard because we watched a few good movies. I really pick a favorite this month because we watched so many good ones. Obviously Star Wars is so iconic, nostalgic, amazing. But I really, really loved the idea of you. I think it was a lot better done than the book in my opinion. But then also Wreck-It Ralph was so cute and I don't know why we put off watching it for so long. It gave me like Toy Story vibes, like toys coming to life. So I can't pick one. We watched a lot of good movies this month. And then favorite TV show, I don't know. I would not say part one of Bridgerton season three, you guys know, was not a huge fan, but we did start watching Dark Matter and the new season of Clarkson's Farm. So favorite snacks, I have two. Uh, first is the skinny dipped dark chocolate salted caramel cashews specifically. These are amazing. I've probably had about four or five bags of them this month. They're like the perfect sweet treat. They're like covered in, I don't even know, white chocolate. They're so good. They got the crunch of the cashew, the saltiness of the sea salt, but then also the like dark chocolate and caramel. Mmm, so good. And they just say in the back, like half the sugar, no sugar alcohol, woman founded, no artificial colors or flavors and plant protein. So good. Then I also this month discovered Unreal and specifically the dark chocolate peanut gem. So like a peanut M&M. I like the regular M&Ms too. These, I think the colors are just made from like natural 
flavors and colors colored by veggies and sweetened without sugar alcohols no artificial anything yeah and they're like still fun and colorful mmm so yummy two of my favorite snacks okay my favorite drink of the month is like an accessory to the drink I'll put an overlay in because we just actually ran out but it's the new cold foam the international delight I haven't tried the vanilla one yet but we tried the caramel one and it's so good and stuff like that I would way rather spend five six dollars on that at the grocery store and it lasts me like 10 to 12 coffees because if you think about it a cold brew with cold foam at Starbucks is like six dollars so like you've already we make our cold brew at home anyway so like we've already made it worth the money by having one coffee which is kind of crazy and it's nice because you can add as much or as little as you want it's like the perfect hint of sweetness because you guys know I don't like sweet coffee it's just like the perfect little afternoon pick me up I love it so much not self-care but like maintenance products I've been loving you guys know I have insanely acne prone skin I never switch up my skincare however I started incorporating a toner in um, I have a lot of barrier issues obviously because we live in Canada and the weather is just crazy up and down so a lot of my acne over the winter and stuff is just caused by a damaged barrier this saved me the bioma milky toner oh my gosh this keeps my skin so hydrated and plump i'm like not most people who tries new skincare all the time so like if i'm talking about a product it's because i genuinely love it and it does not break me out this is amazing it's great for sensitive skin it's not pore clogging helps my skin barrier a ton and nothing but great things to say about it also the packaging so cute and affordable it's from the drugstore uh and then lastly i have the hawaiian tropic after sun lotion i've been using this for a few years honestly i really love it i really struggle with like aloe vera after i've been in the sun i find it like very sticky and it sticks to my clothes so this is more of just like a lotion it smells so good it smells like coconut or it says coconut papaya on it it does have aloe vera in it i believe and i really like it because it's not sticky or greasy like some other after sun products are so really really love this and it's like the perfect size for me to stick in my beach bag and then last two favorites are kind of random but these sunglasses i always buy my sunglasses from amazon i remember four years ago i bought myself a pair of ray-bans for my birthday i was so excited it was like my first big purchase after paying off all of my consumer debt and to be honest i will never do that again because i'm the type who loses sunglasses i squash them and i'm like an amazon 20 dollars sunglass girl for life matt doesn't really love them but i do i think they're just like really fun and a little i don't know they're unique and like i said i never try out new styles but the Sojo's brand of sunglasses on Amazon is amazing. I will link these ones down below. And these are just like really cute if you have like a really cool girl outfit on. The shape of them, I just, I think they're kind of fun, honestly. And I feel like with certain outfits, they look cute. Certain outfits, they don't. But for like 20 something bucks, I'm an Amazon sunglass girly. And then lastly, we have this fanny pack. I've had this one for two years now almost. And then I got the white one for this trip. This is the perfect size fanny pack. Listen, I also had a little on the belt bag at one point, but I'm over that now. Okay, this is where it's at. It is the most spacious $20 fanny pack in the world, especially for like summer, going to the farmer's markets and stuff. But I find some fanny packs that fit a lot. They get really heavy and also bulky. This one doesn't. I just love the way it sits on me. I have a bigger chest. And so fanny packs are super hit or miss or like crossbody fanny packs, belt bags, whatever. And this one is just like absolutely perfect. And it fits so much in it you guys it just fits so much without being bulky and they have them in a ton of colors too i think like if you're doing like a bachelorette party this could be a fun little gift and yeah so those are all my favorites for the month and that is the reset for june i hope you guys enjoyed i'm excited to see what june has to offer like i said i have some really fun videos planned i cannot wait cannot wait for june
love you guys so much and I'll talk to you in the next one.